lonely pine. Um, and it's soft. It's related to Norfolk Island Pine, which is uh, Ericaria. And there's, uh, there are, there's several Ericarias. There's uh, one called Ericaria Bidwilla, I believe it is, that's it's sticky. And I've seen those growing in Holland. Um, and they grow on, along the west coast. They need a cool, moist, not so really cold climate, which is hard for them to grow here because it's so hot in the summer. But anyway, uh, this one is supposed to be hardy to zone 7. This fella rappelled down into this canyon, found these trees, didn't know what they was, and here he worked for the, I guess for the National Park. So he brought out some samples and, and uh, none of their experts knew what it was. So they go back in there and uh, uh, there was less than a hundred of these trees total left uh, in this canyon. And they think this canyon protected them from wildfire. Cause in Australia they have dry seasons and have a lot of wildfires and in this canyon evidently it doesn't burn because some of these trees were I guess a hundred hundreds of years old so do they have to be brought in in the winter and they're hardy to zone seven which we are it should winter out here okay. now this one is not going out till <laughs> I made a couple more cuttings we're a little hothouse guy here huh? well I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna repot this one and get it bigger and get me a backup or two rooted if I can in case when I do put this one out it doesn't make it but it should make it here because our Norfolk Island has to be oh yes yeah it's very tropical and um, it's I think it came from the Canary Islands or somewhere like that I think but, New uh, yeah yeah so anyway uh, I bought one and uh, it is a it's a very unique tree it's basically a fossil tree it evidently grew during the time of the dinosaurs like the cycads and like the ginkgo and some of the other ancient trees <clears throat> and uh, this guy they, they they don't tell anybody where this spot is at even yet today it's kind of a, a secret where the original you know colony of these things are at I understand but it's a it's a quite a unusual tree and it's just interesting uh, it was 1994 when they first found it so this is only 14 years later and this one was numbered 13,000 but they uh, 13,000 something but they're, they're, they're propagating them and, and a good part of the money from sales of these goes back to Australia for preservation of exotic species and this sort of thing but um, yeah yeah 1994 huh uh, it gets a pretty good size. Yeah, well, they, this is the story here. Fewer than a hundred adult trees in the wild. I didn't read this. And, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. He's got a tree just like this one from the Geographic Society. Oh, yeah, that's Mr. Thompson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It should do well there, but it is supposed to be hardy to uh, zone seven, and it has a very unusual bark when it gets older. The bark is quite unique, and I've got a little book of. Society's uh, gift gift shop. Oh, yeah. they, they, they came out. They came out. <laughs> they came out for Christmas with their Christmas catalog, and uh, I saw it, so I ordered it uh, and got mine in somewhere another right out in January. Wasn't it? Yeah, but it, it's um, it's going to be. Um, what do you have literature on? Or do yeah, well, it's basically the same thing in that press oh, okay. release. Okay. He was 1994, and there's less than 100 of them. Uh, it had a very interesting run. It really did. But, uh, yeah, it's an old tree. This, this fellow here bought one and put it in a retirement center planting there in California, which is 
unique. It'll be scattered all over the country here in a few years, I'm sure. And they, they say it doesn't produce a lot of seed. There was some comment, well, will it become an invasive problem? Well, it's existed for a million or so years, but and it produces seed, but the seed, it doesn't produce a lot of seed, and evidently they're not propagating it from seed. To seed.